let's go on to a couple of your questions and emails. This one, by coincidence, total cosmic coincidence, this was not planned anyway, listener Tom Kilworth sent in a question addressed to us and Dr. Plate. He must have psychically known, Phil, that you were going to be on the show this week. I was going to say, I didn't know Phil's dad was a doctor. Wow. Somebody give him a million dollars. Tom writes, <laughs> nice try. One of my not-so-skeptical friends linked me to this video featuring astronomer Nassim Haramein talking about his models of planetary and solar activity. It sounds pretty bunk to me, but his models are interesting. This is the video I was shown. We'll give you the link. What do you guys think of this? Might be an interesting topic for the podcast, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Phil, I, I feel I, I know you uh, lost a few brain cells watching this video. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little ticked that you made me watch that. Uh, because that's, yeah. you know, people say that's 10 minutes. I'm never getting back. It's worse than that. It's actually like an entire section of my brain that uh, atrophied and melted out of my ear after watching that. But so didn't it remind you. you of Kepler and the, you know, and the shapes and the planets and all that? Didn't it remind you of that story a little bit? Yes. <laughs> he reminded me of Neil <laughs> Adams. That's who he reminded me of. Ooh. Uh, that's not Yeah, good. this, wow. I mean, it's, it's hard to actually describe or understand a place to start or find any sort of grip on the amount of weirdness that this video has in it. I mean, he, he just, he just says stuff and it doesn't matter what he's saying. He just says it. Uh, he's talking about watching, uh, Shoemaker Levy 9, the comet hitting Jupiter back in 94. And he says the community said that comet might not be visible from the earth. And it's like, no, actually most astronomers thought it would. And there were a few that said it might not. We weren't sure. And, and so that's how science works. And then they, the narrator was saying, flames emerged from the impact point. Kind of sort of implying that, you know, you could see this with a small telescope, which isn't true. Uh, it, 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 oh, his whole thing, you know, I'm watching this. And he's talking about the tetrahedron dictating the energy about to happen inside the Earth and all this stuff or inside Jupiter. And I'm thinking tetrahedrons, uh, certain la specific latitudes, he's talking about Hoagland. Yes. And five yes, and seconds later, this is the theory of consultant to NASA's Richard C. Hoagland. And Hoagland. Thought, oh, Hoagland. 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 <laughs> Do this. Um, if you want to know everything you need to know about Hoagland, always be funny. go to my website. Go to badastronomy.com. Yeah, if you go there, you go to my blog, actually. But if you search on the web and look up my name and his name, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I've written about him. Um, <laughs> It's like what it was at Linus Pauling who said this wasn't even wrong. It's it's so bad it's not even wrong. Have you guys ever gone to the website crank.net? No. It, no. It's been around forever and I mean I remember reading it when I was in grad school. So we're talking, you know, 1990s here. And uh he would he would take these pseudoscience websites and and grade them. He would he would he would write sort of a synopsis of them and then grade them as cranky, crankiest and elucid. And <laughs> elucid being sort of the skeptical equivalent of 404 reality not found. <laughs> and, and this I is exactly that what that awesome. is. You can watch this guy giving talks about the pyramids and the Egyptians and he just says stuff. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong and mostly wrong. And, you know, people are just going to run away with this. You know, geologists don't like to talk about this fact of the pyramids. And it's like, yeah, because, you know, it's it's made up silliness. Of course they don't talk about it. They have science to do, you know. Yeah. Mm. Well, this guy is clearly steeped in the alternative history, alternative literature. Yeah. You know, a lot of this – I watched his Egypt one too just to get a, a more, you know, background on this guy. And, you know, it, it wasn't his own unique nonsense. It was stuff that he's just – reading in other people's nonsense like the fact that there are no hieroglyphics that that reference the building of the pyramids well that's wrong yeah that is wrong uh, yeah uh, again there's sort of this neil adams stuff where he's totally shooting from the hip totally going off the cuff very anti-intellectual very anti-scholarship and he would say things like Oh, there's like so many, uh, more than a million or so stones in the pyramid. They're, they all would have to have been placed within this very, you know, minute um, amount of error. You know, you have to, any tiny error would be magnified millions of times. So it had to be more precise than we can even manage today. That's, right. just, that's just not true. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading that when I was a kid in the UFO books. Yeah, so that's where he's getting it from. Yeah. He's reading so, all this yeah. crap, and he's, you know, he thinks it, he's it, doing science. At least Hoagland yep. has the cojones to make up his own crap, <laughs> and he does just make it up wholesale. 
uh, this guy is borrowing crap from everybody else and, and repackaging it. You know, and I, I think I found his magnum opus. I found a YouTube of this guy from uh, the early 2000s where he's talking about a comet that passed through the solar system. Now, this comet, he says over and over, was twice the size of Jupiter. Right. Ah, okay. Wow. I know twice the size of Jupiter. Oh, I know. I, I know. I'm sure he got it from James McCanny. McCanny is this guy who says that comets are hot and they actually gain mass and they don't lose it. There's no water in comets. He, wow. He, it's, he, like, it, it's, like, it's more like an anti-comet than a comet. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, was, he was kind of a uh, – for a short time, McCanny was the darling of the late night uh, – uh, crank radio shows and uh, Art Bell, gotcha. Coast to coast. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I guess he was on Coast to Coast. I don't know, but I heard him a lot of times on these other radio shows, paranoid conspiracy theory shows. And I basically ripped him to shreds on my website. I wasn't going to, but he kept getting airtime and he was tying this stuff into Planet X and all this stuff. And he said, you know, this comet. Here's a picture of this comet. Look, it's bigger than Jupiter. And it's like, no, the comet is actually about 20 miles across. The gas surrounding it, the, the, the ice that makes up a comet as it gets near the sun turns into a gas, surrounds the solid part like a cloud. And that can be tens Huge. of thousands of yeah. miles across, but it's not a solid object. It's ridiculous to claim that. So that's, that's where he's getting that from, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And the, getting back to the tetrahedron thing, you know, basically what this guy was doing was, the, the geometry equivalent of numerology. Exactly. You know, pu- putting tetrahedrons inside a, a, the sphere of whatever, Jupiter or the Earth, and then, you know, w- where the base of the tetrahedron falls on the, the sphere, there's stuff there. Yeah. And that, that confirms <laughs> that there, this is a real effect. And if you notice, when he talks about the great red spot on Jupiter, he said it's near. Yeah, it's near, near this yeah. spot. Yes. And it's like, really? Shouldn't it be right on it? Yeah. 19.47 uh, degrees. Yeah, so yeah. When, you, when you allow for a near hits, then, then it becomes all the more likely that you could just find something, anything, to confirm your wacky theory. I believe I've said this on the show before that 90%, actually more than 90% of all murders on Earth happen within a week of the newer full moon. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> Don't. No. Yeah, it's, it's right. true. It's amazing. That is true. <laughs> that is in fact true. Oh, what are the odds? My gosh, one hundred percent are the odds. One hundred percent.